Now AEW is in big trouble because CM Punk is gone and it might have been the biggest signing WWE ever did in his entire existence. Looking at the numbers, obviously. Hell, WWE now might be signed with Warner Bros somehow. And then you look at Jon Moxley, another big star of AEW. Well, look at his position at the card. Look at his match with Rush just recently. I don't know. There's another big name. I guess he's a legend, Sting. He's jumping off of 10 foot ladders, you know, potentially injuring himself when he doesn't really need to. All he needs to do is a body stump and that's really it. And kudos, they're not making them, they're making Sting do that anymore, by the way. Right now he's chilling. Chris Jericho isn't as hot as he used to be. We had many young talent come in, many talent with potential come in and be underutilized. We had people like uh, Will Hobbs and Wardlow come in, get over, get pushed down the card, get over again, get pushed down again because of bad booking. And all of this to say is that AEW is hurting for a star right now. MJF is holding it down because Adam Cole was there too. He got injured. Brian Danielson. It seems like every single big match he does at this point with the tournament, even the small ones, he gets some sort of injury. I am scared about his future. So big star. Who do we got? Kenny Omega. I mean, you know the whole debacle, right? With his match against MJF. So many people were angry because they were telling AW, like, why would you do this? Why would you do this match out of nowhere? Why wouldn't you market the hell out of this match? Give it a storyline, milk it for all it's worth. You're doing it next week. They were saying this because MJF is over as hell. He's definitely the biggest young star, the rookie of the century for AEW. And then you got Kenny Omega. If he was a small star, if he truly didn't matter, nobody would be angry. Like, okay, who cares? Whatever. The match ha is happening next week. No build up. Who cares? But obviously, because Kenny Omega is important, people care. I love Kenny Omega when he's in New Japan because of the way he's presented. Oh my God, he's so good. And his matches against Okada back in the day, so good. But AEW, he's the main reason why I stopped watching AEW. When he said 69 me Don as he was the AEW world champion, that was the moment where I stopped watching AEW regularly. After that moment, I just dip in every now and then. And I used to look at what CM Punk was doing when he returned. I used to look at, you know, there were some matches with Will Ospreay, who's another signed star. He's nowhere to be seen, but at least there is one sigh of relief for AEW right there. But yeah, just very little, like, this segment sounds amazing. It's I'm making a lot of noise. Or this segment in particular, I'm just interested specifically. So let me look. And Kenny Omega was one of those guys, just like CM Punk or, you know, Will Ospreay. When Kenny Omega did something especially important, I would look at it. Like, I have stopped watching Jericho's segments for so long, but I did take a look when Kenny Omega and Jericho started teaming up again, because I like Kenny Omega, man. Even though I hate the way he's presented in AEW, just, you know, when he's in the ring, he's, he's fun. He's fun to watch. I don't agree with his psychology, but I think... Athleticism wise, like he gives it all over 100% every single match he goes up for. So, yeah, okay, we got two stars that I can count, which is one is MJF, and then two stars that really make a difference MJF, and one of them was Kenny Omega. That comes to my mind right now. I might be missing people. Well, say goodbye and good night to Kenny Omega as well for a unknown amount of time. Could be a month, two months, three years. We have no idea. Let me show you the tweet. So here it is, he posted this not only on Twitter, but on every single social media he's active in. And basically his message is right here. Let me read it for you. I can't really sugarcoat this. I am out indefinitely. I tried to keep pushing past the pain for as long as I could until it became too much. Luckily, doctors caught me when they did. I'll be here. So in the meantime, please enjoy wrestling. Here's a closer look to his picture. Let me give it a like for support. Dude, it breaks my heart because... Like I said, I don't like him in AEW, but I like him in general. And it sucks that he's in this position when he could have been utilized so much more smartly. You should have definitely took your time with the MJF feud. Set it up earlier. You should have not killed yourself against Will Ospreay. Screw what people expected. Make them expect something else. Set the expectations for them. Don't let the people set the expectations for you because this is what ends up happening. Kenny Omega isn't 55 years old, he's not 60, he's not one of these old timers. No, he's, let's see how old he is. As you see, he is 40 years old. I thought he would be 45 maybe, but he's kind of younger than I expected. 40. And here's the problem with this. The last time he came back, you know, before the Brothers Bray stuff, he came back in like bandages, he was all dressed up in, you know, injury preventing clothing or whatever. He looked kind of miserable. 
And even before coming back, do you remember one time when he was on a stream? As a matter of fact, show, don't tell. I keep forgetting. Here it is. Yeah, you know what? Just watch this, you know? Be good to your fucking self. But you know what you could do as well? It's even better. Be good to somebody else. It doesn't have to be a friend. It could be it's a... It's nice to be nice. Yeah. Could be a friend, could be a family member, could be... Could even be just, just a wrestler, actor, struggling artist. I don't know, anybody. So he was neck deep, knee deep, arm deep in injury at this point. Many, many surgeries, many months of just grueling training, trying to get back into the ring. And he was playing Street Fighter 6 as always and not fight forever because even he himself is embarrassed of his own game. Okay, that's for another video. Actually, I already made a video about that. You can check it out on my channel, but we can only assume that things have gotten worse for him. So much worse that in storyline, just this week, right? He was with Jericho, he was cutting a promo, which wasn't good, but okay. Besides all of that, I was still excited somewhat to see him wrestle, but we might not see that for a very long time. And honestly, now thinking about it, we might not see that ever again, because right now we don't know what kind of injuries he has. Is this really, really bad? Will it affect him enough that he won't be able to wrestle or he won't be able to wrestle in the way that he wants to wrestle? And if that's the case, will he say, okay, since I cannot do it 100% or exactly the way I want to do it, maybe I should hang my boots here. Like I don't want to overstay my welcome, beat a dead horse. All right, I'm going to read one last post and I'm out of here. Shout out to the WrestleZone. So former AW World Champion Kenny Omega took to Twitter on December 15, which is today, and announced that he would be out indefinitely. Yada yada, all of this stuff we know already. Now, Omega last wrestled on the December 9 episode of AW Collision. He and Chris Jericho were set out to challenge Ricky Starks and Big Bill for the AW World Tag Team Championships at AW World's end on December 30. Shout out to Kenny Baum and Just Brian. <laughs> they're going to AW World's end. And they're not going to be able to see this match now. At least Jericho will have to have another partner. And there's an update. Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful reports that Omega had been ill through the week or throughout the week, even ahead of his match with Paige. He then sought medical attention after his promo on Dynamite and he was hospitalized and diagnosed with diverticulitis. So I'm not sure if this is true or not because I did a bit of searching on other social media and tried to find a tweet or a post about anything confirming this situation. But if Kenny indeed has diverticulitis, it's I think useful to know what it means exactly because this is the thing that limited Brock Lesnar for so long that he eventually overcame, but let's see what it is. So div diverticulosis occurs when small bulging pouches Diverticula, diverticula, yeah. English is my second language, okay. Develop in your digestive tract. When one or more of these pouches become inflamed or infected, the condition is called diverticulitis. Diverticula are small, bulging pouches that can form in the lining of your digestive system. So that's the condition. What does it cause? It causes pain, which may be constant and persist for several days. The lower left side of the abdomen is the usual site of the pain. Nausea and vomiting, fever, abdominal tenderness, constipation, or less commonly, diarrhea. So nothing, nothing fun at all. So yeah, that's the situation. Normally I stick to processing games or gaming in general, but this mattered to me, so I thought I should talk about it. What do you think about the situation? If something even bigger comes out, I think I might make an update video on it. So stay tuned, give me a subscribe, and give this video a like actually, because it would really help out with the algorithm. I'll see you on the next one.